Greetings, my friends. My peace and happiness be with you. I felt today to start my little series on uh, Gnosticism, which, for all my searching through 20 years of non-stop reading and philosophy, uh, mysticism, experiences with uh, demonic and angelic, I should realize that uh, I've taken a long, hard road to get to where I am, and I still must retain my humility before the God always and realize that my knowledge is nothing. <laughs> I could not preach the truth to an angel or something. You could kind of giggle at me. But for those of us who are in the flesh, lost in the flesh, trying to find a way to be redeemed, to enjoy this planet to some degree, but mostly to be looking forward, because behold, the flesh is short. <laughs> a few uh, decades of mortality, and people claim that they're the king of the world, or the queen of the world, and it's all completely an illusion and a mockery and a shadow of the truth. In reality, I suppose ignorance is the main thing to play. Pride and ignorance play the greatest sins of all, I suppose you might say. Everyone can meditate and contemplate upon that of their own volition. So today I'm sitting in the park on a Sunday morning, and I wish to preach and teach and share some Gnosticism. The original Christian message is the f grandest thing I've ever discovered, deeper than Buddhism, better than Zoroastrianism, uh, far superior to any natural shamanism. Shamanism has to do with honing in with spirits that belong to a particular planet. The true religion is light in the now and the understanding of the balance and the necessity of chaos, but light in the now. This is the one true universal religion. And if we are in the light of the now, we are with what they call the universal, not just the galactic or intergalactic, but the absolutely multiversal, universal brotherhood, sisterhood, just call it brotherhood. It's not a sex in that uh, place. Uh, brotherhood of light, multiverse, universe, brotherhood of light, one true religion, or you could say spirituality, to rule them all. No. <laughs> But yes, it is a truth. It's a na it's natural default. It is what you find when you uncover the ego, the misuse of association with the physical ba body, and even, I was going to say a baddie. Yeah, yeah, a body can be a baddie, sure. <laughs> Up to bat, man. Association with a body or even a planet. Shamanism is not the oldest religion. Shamanism has to do with contacting spirits and nature spirits in a particular zone of causation in a temporal uh, settle, settlement, or let's say an established, temporary, manifested place. Um, if you're talking about just being with spirits and stuff, spirits are exterior, but the oneness that we all share, what the Hindus call Paramatva, is within us, has one thing. Even the Buddha talked about this, the Buddha mind is one, one essence, one mind, ultimately, and that is true. But the Gnosticism taught by the original Jesus Christ who is uh, far greater than most people think, but he is also humble as they come, and always saying, I wish you would be greater than I. But nonetheless, that is an incredibly immaculate spirit that incarnated, who was enlightened upon birth. They will tell you stories about him, they will make, say he was married to Mary and had kids and all this, this is absolutely not the truth. The real uh, truth of Yeshua was that he was animated of a great spirit, Sort of like being puppeteered, but that's a sort of uh, can have a negative connotation. But in essence, he was animated of a great, great spirit, uh, far beyond what most even dare to understand. And he had no need of a wife and children, and was not here for sexual indulgences at all. So those who created those myths just to uh, sort of degrade things, to mock, and also to give themselves self-importance if they have a certain blood in their DNA. <laughs> that's just childishness and uh, ego. And the real teaching of Yeshua has nothing to do with this at all. The gospel of flesh is not what we're talking about. The Catholics, the Muslims, and so on and so forth, most of the big religions preach a religion of flesh. Enjoy your body, go to heaven and get virgins and have sex. This is absolutely preposterous and ridiculous. <laughs> real spirituality has nothing to do with this. You are disassociating, or you are rather upgrading your interplay with available things, elements, cosmic forces, this, that, and the other, but ultimately you can be above all of that, because the origin is be a, above and beyond and behind all these things. And our real nature and our true self is one with this, uh, what they call the unmanifested invisible spirit, which is the one and only God of gods. 
Everything else is a lesser god, a fake god, a dark god, or an agent acting on behalf of the light for sure. But even the greatest angels, even Michael or Gabriel, or hidden angels like Ratziel, Gamaliel, they will say to you, never bow to me, bro, bow to the One Father. So with that little interlude, let us do a small snippet from the Gospel of James that I have here from the wonderful Nag Hammadi scriptures. Anybody who thinks that they're a Christian should read this. Anyone who mocks Christianity because the church uh, infiltrated and destroyed a lot of it should read Nag Hammadi. Uh, then you'll really know. I get insulted when people make fun of Christ because uh, you know there's a lot of uh, yin yang effect going on. In reality, the Catholic Church worshipped the devil for sure, and they were proud that they killed the Christos. And they think they did God a favor by killing the Christos. And now the average person, even the elect, even the enlightened people, make fun of the church, but even go so far as to make fun of the Jesus Christ, which is a huge mistake, because if you become a real, actual mystic, not just a philosopher, uh, and you get in touch with spirits and angels and uh, all these things, you'll see firsthand that this is very real. <laughs> and those who know what I'm saying know what I'm saying. Even Native American medicine men gone into trances and talked and found out that Jesus was indeed the Christ. Now that's not to not to say you have to be a Christian and follow a watered down thing and do what you want to do. The one universal thing is the love and light and semblance and unity with the Almighty Father. In the Nordic tradition they call Odin the All Father, but of course they give Odin humanistic characteristics, what they call anthropomorphizing, turning God as if he was a human with characteristics like that. But still, Odin is the All-Father. So they weren't wrong to call him that. You could say All-Mother, but it's not exactly a feminine thing. A feminine is that which takes in and then manifests back out in a way of form, whether it's 3D or other. Why we say Father is what we mean by seed giver. But it's not about sex. God isn't male or female, ultimately. It's both. It's neither. It's asexual. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. So, I hope the wind isn't too bad. A little windy this morning, which is kind of cool. I'm going to read to you guys a little snippet from the Gospel of James, the secret book of James, I should say. And this is not meant to be revealed until up in recent times. These scriptures were found in 1945, and they were carried down for hundreds of years from the original church. So this is a book of the Apostle James, James the Elder, and I wish to read this for you, a little part. And then you judge for yourself if it's true or not, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not a person that looks to convert if you don't believe what I say doesn't shake my faith, doesn't change my way, but neither do I attack you or condemn you or wish death upon you. The universe will work itself out. <laughs> Peace be with you. Okay. This was at a part where Jesus came back after his resurrection to speak with uh, the apostles James and Peter. Okay. So this was 550 days after rising from the dead, and they asked him, did you really depart and leave us? And he said, No, but I shall return to the place from which I came. If you want to come with me, come. And they answered and said, If you order us, we will come. And he said, I tell you the truth. No one will ever enter the kingdom of heaven because I ordered it, but rather because you yourselves are filled. Do you want to be filled? If your hearts are drunk, do you wish to be sober? If you are drunk, you ought to be ashamed. From now on, whether you are awake or asleep, remember that you have seen the Son of Humanity and have spoken with Him and listened to Him. Woe to those who have seen the Son of Humanity. Blessed will you be when you have not seen the human or associated with Him or spoken with Him or listened to anything from Him. This is your life. The human, the hedonistic teachings of Catholicism or uh, Islam and stuff like that. Christ came to save spirits, Buddha as well actually and all the real absolute masters. But the Christ was about saving spirits who had come to fall in order to save other pure spirits who were going to incarnate here later. And when he says, uh, woe to those who have seen the human, if you think that the Christ was just a human, or, oh, he's a, he's a good bloke, uh, blah, 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 or they make him like he was married and having tons of kids, if they see that, then they're in it wrong. This is not it at all. He was basically animated from an incredibly powerful spirit, and that spirit, if you have ever had a visit from it, you'll know for sure. <laughs> I will say no more. There you go. Okay. Understand that you were healed when you were sick and that you might reign. But woe to those who have found relief from sickness. They will relapse into sickness. Blessed are you who have not been sick or have 
of known relief before getting sick. God's kingdom is yours. I tell you, be filled and leave no space within you empty, or else the one that is coming will mock you. Meaning when the Antichrist is risen upon the earth, which it is, all the hedonism and the immorality and Hollywood and all these things, those who are not well grounded in spirit will be easily swayed by the world. Look at those who follow whatever Hollywood or the media or music tells them to do. They're very easily hypnotized and brainwashed. Those who are deep in spirit who have found the inner light of the eternal now will be very much immovable. Even if you retain some faults, and I certainly do, I have my own anger, I'm still a red-blooded human that I'm attracted to women, I have a girlfriend, so on and so forth. Okay, it's okay. And my little flaw, that's not a flaw to be attracted to <laughs> opposite sex or whatever you like, but I mean, you know, you're still human, but find the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven is within. And don't let the world come, because if the world comes to mock you and you're afraid of the uh, opinions of the triple aspect of the devil, then uh, you'll be uh, easily swayed to fall down. And you'll be ashamed of the light. And if you're ashamed of the light, the light will be ashamed of you. And then when all is stripped away from this 3D world and all is naked before the thrones of the divinities, everybody is going to look pretty much like a fool. Uh, whoever had confidence in mundane things, temporary things, money, or uh, were afraid of th different stuff, ashamed of good, ashamed of light and holiness, and those who followed the whims of the world, they, will look, they already do look like fools, and they will look like fools unto themselves later, for sure. Anyway, just saying. <laughs> okay, and then Peter said, Lord, three times you have told us be filled, but I think we are filled. And the Savior said, For this reason I have told you be filled, that you may not lack. For those who lack will not be saved. To be filled is good and to lack is bad. Yet, since it is also good for you to lack, but bad for you to be filled, whoever is filled also lacks. One who lacks is not filled in the way another who lacks is filled, because he's speaking of spirit. But whoever is filled is brought to an appropriate end. So, should you lack when you can fill yourselves, and be filled when you lack, that you may be able to fill yourselves even more, you'll be all right. Be filled with spirit, but lack in reason. For reason is of the soul, and it is soul, but the spirit is the truth of light. Master, we can obey you if you wish, for we have forsaken our fathers and mothers and our villages and have followed you. Give us the means not to be tempted by the evil devil. The master said, What good is it to you if you do the Father's will, but you are not given a part of his bounty when you are tempted by Satan? Meaning you have to earn your stripes and uh, rejoice if the world hates you and stuff like that. If you are oppressed by Satan and persecuted to do the Father's will, the Father will love you and make you my equal and consider you beloved through his forethought and by your own choice. Won't you stop loving the flesh and fear suffering? Don't you know that you have not yet been abused, unjustly accused, locked up in prison, unlawfully condemned, crucified without reason, or buried in the sand, as I myself was by the evil one? Do you dare spare the flesh, you for whom the spirit is a wall surrounding you? If you consider how long the world has existed before you, and how long it will exist after you, you will see that your life is but a day and your sufferings but an hour. The good will not enter the world. Disdain death, therefore, and care about life. Remember my cross and my death, and you may live. I answered and said to a master, I do not, you do not mention the cross and death, for they are far from you. And the master said, I tell you the truth. None will be saved unless they understand my cross, for God's kingdom belongs to those who have believed in my cross. Be seekers of death, then, like the dead who seek for life. For what they seek becomes apparent to them. And what is there to cause them any concern? As for you, when you search out death, it will teach you about being chosen. Meaning, seek the death of ego and do not worry about what's going on in the world. Realize you're going to die anyways, so why not think about what's after that? Why not perfect your spirit so you're ready for that, rather than be stuck in the illusion and brainwashing of the temporary physical reality that you and I have? Do not be hypnotized by that temporary physical reality. It's not really the reality. Build yourself for what's after, what's before, is the nowness of spirit. I tell you the truth, no one afraid of death will be saved. For the kingdom of death belongs to those who are put to death. Therefore I say, become better than I. Be like the child of the Holy Spirit. And then I asked him, Master, how can we prophesy to those who ask us to prophesy to them? There are many who will bring a request to us and look to us to hear our pronouncement. The master said, Don't you know that the head of prophecy was cut off with John the Baptist? 
I said, Master, it is impossible to remove the head of prophecy, isn't it? And he said to me, when you realize what head means, and that prophecy comes from the head, then understand the meaning of it was removed. First I spoke with you in parables, and you do not understand. Now I am speaking with you openly, and you do not grasp it. Nevertheless, you were for me a parable among parables, and a disclosure among things revealed. Be eager to be saved without being urged. Rather, be fervent on your own, and, if possible, outdo even me, for this is how the Father will love you and take it to him. Come to hate hypocrisy and evil intention. Intention produces hypocrisy, and hypocrisy is far from truth. Do not let heaven's kingdom wither away. It is like a palm shoot whose dates dropped around it. It produced buds, and after they grew, its productivity dried up. This is also what happened with fruit that came from this single root. After it was harvested, fruit was obtained by many. It certainly would be good if you could produce new growth now on your own. You would find it. Since I was glorified like this once before, why do you hold me back when I am eager to go? After my labor, you have made me stay with you another 18 days because of the parables. For some people, it was enough to listen to the teaching and understand, such as the shepherds, the seed, the building. He's talking about the different parables he gave, of course. Be eager for the word of truth. The first aspect of the word is faith, that it is true. The second is love. The third is works that you do. And from these come all life. The word is like a grain of wheat. When someone sowed it, he had faith in it. And when it sprouted, he loved it because he saw many grains instead of just one. After that he worked, he was saved because he prepared it and kept it as food, and he still kept some to sow again. This is how you can acquire heaven's kingdom for yourselves. Unless you acquire it through knowledge, you will not be able to find it. And so I say, be sober in the truth and do not go astray. And often have I said to you all together, and to you alone, please be saved. I have commanded you to follow me and have taught you how to speak before the rulers. Choose it of your own. See that I have come down and have spoken and have exerted myself and have won my crown when I saved you. I came down to live with you and that you also might live with me. And when I found that your houses had no roofs, I lived in houses that could receive me when I came down. Trust in me, my brothers. Understand what the great light is. The Father does not need me. A Father does not need a Son, but it is the Son who needs the Father. To him I am going, for the Father and the Son is not in need of you. Listen to the word and understand knowledge. Love life and no one will persecute you and no one will oppress you other than you yourselves. And it goes on a little bit more, but I don't want to exhaust the video. When he meant by roof, those who did not have roof was those who did not have strength and overabundance of confidence in the, in the 3D world. Those who were naked in spirit, hungry and empty and looking for truth and knowledge to fill them, to be filled with the light. So those who opened the roof and led up to the God and open the heart were filled by receiving that which came down rather than what was in the world money and temptations of various sorts and da 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 da, da. but rather those who had no roof or those who wanted more those who didn't feel they really belonged here and were grievance having grievances for being here the roof was off and it is those who received the light like a sunroof taking the light in or my own little ball chrome dome <laughs> Maybe that's why I have no hair. I needed a bigger sunroof because I'm a fool. <laughs> so anyways, that's just a little snippet. And the video is already long. I know people only have a certain attention span. It's a, a world that we want everything fast. But we don't, we're not willing to do the work. And uh, not everyone, at least, or we're confused. But you have to take the time to understand. And think about these things. Don't make it a heavy burden. But let it free you up. And don't be afraid to challenge yourself a little bit. It's important for growth. There's no point boasting in flesh or being blind and ignorant all the way up into your death. Better to think about death. I was speaking about shamanism earlier, and I have a great respect for shamanism, even though it's not uh, the original religion of, at all. It's just, a, well, it's eternal in its own sense, that you, every planet you go to, you'll always find a way to contact spirits, and whatever nature uh, semblance of elements is available. But the nowness of, this, of the light is the all. Nonetheless, the shaman said, always walk with one foot in both worlds, and always be mindful and ready yourself for death. Christ would tell you the same thing as would our good friend Siddhartha, the Buddha. <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> don't mind my humor. I have to, can't take it always so seriously. It's not, it's not meant to be serious. But uh, take it as joy and fruit of life. 
I will do more. Blessings and peace be with you. I have a doozy coming up, and I've still been reluctant to talk about it. It's going to be a very heavy subject, and I think it'll be the next one I'll talk about, or the third one. It's going to uh, rattle some th bones in people, but anyway, my videos are very popular anyway. Okay. <laughs> Love, light, and truth be with you, my friends. Wish you a glorious moment.